After so many garagist tell me Le Motel has mocked and do a cutting action on their throat and then mutilate it a bit further and getting it back, getting it repaired and back, back to England and <laughs> sorted out once it's in England from the half-baked job that the French garagist overconfident, underskilled and half fitted out work on the motel. After that I've delivered my next load down to my barn and I'm empty and I'm heading north back to England. I've done a lot of I got out of the habit a long time ago now, really, of putting three litres of vegetable oil in my diesel tank, making sure that I had a 50-50 mix with what was already diesel that was already there. Um, it came to parity with the price of vegetable oil and the price of diesel. It seems to be coming round again, though. Especially in France, there's a vegetable and oil shortage, don't you know? Um, especially when it comes to two-for-one offert. Le shelves are empty <laughs> almost immediately <laughs> work it out for yourself people aren't daft two euros ten for one litre of gasoil diesel for your vehicle um, you can take advantage of the two-for-one offert. Supermarkets in France aren't that great on their special offers. Um, three euros fifty for three litres. Once again, gasol, two euros ten for one litre. Even without any special offers on, if they're off the shelf straight away. Two euros fifty for two litres is fairly commonplace, fairly straightforward. Why is there a vegetable oil shortage? We all know why, but no one's writing it in a paper. It's propaganda. For ethical reasons and for health and safety reasons. Uh, renewables, hydroelectric power, needs to be accelerated more than governments say that it needs to accel be accelerated. Because nuclear is the option, the other option. Nuclear isn't an option. It's a potential disaster. Fail safes put in place, of course. There's the ethics of oil from Russia. Uh, that's always going to be a problem. That's always going to cause wars. It's a type of ethics. But no one's done anything about that. Um, a HEP building here in the valley near me. Beautifully over designed. It's over designed in the thickness of the rusty steel that's been used, but it's a utility functional building and it's designed in detail better than so much in Britain. Well, that's not, that's supposed to be art, that's not just utility. Is that the architect? Is that the financial setup? I think it's the financial setup, quite honestly. Perhaps our architects don't need to focus on making money so much perhaps it's all reputation because there isn't so much work about we french you'll find our more inclined to relax
A method statement is usually a written way of doing something safely. Um, they are all in my head, but uh, I'm very aware of my method statements and I consider them very safe. You can remove a hazard, you can replace a hazard, you can isolate a hazard, or you can protect from. Uh, that's from most effective to least effective. So like PPE that protects you, that's like the least effective measure. You can't, don't need to protect for something that you've removed as a risk. So it is something that is used only one trade in an area of a building site at any time. That is a method statement. Method. Um, for me, I'm only ever going to be the only trade in the barn. That is an elimination of um, the slapstick type humour that you get in building sites sometimes. Not really so much one-upmanship, just a sort of arrogance of a big fish in a small sea. Or um, I'm the most important person for me, for my price. Um, I have eliminated, tried to eliminate, I've replaced um, temporary structures um, to get to a level as much as possible. You have to erect these structures and that's a risk. Scaffolding I'm talking about really there, aren't I? Um, you can isolate things with administrative controls and engineering controls. Just change things, how things are done. You won't see me with gloves on. Um, you will see me with masks on. I'm just emphasising this because you will probably get instructional videos at some point in time of how to scribe a how to scribe a piece of material to an uh, irregular shaped surface like a skirting board or something while creating a lot of mess or the not creating a lot of waste method it's like skiing an empty ski slope there's no one for you to crash into, no one to crash into you, no mixed abilities to... Ah, some of you have been skiing recently and you will know that. Beauty of Covid. So safe skiing. For curries, smuggle your own Patax packet. Because it's rare that you'll find a good French curry. And those Patax packets are rare in little or other else. Continental shovels, shall I call them? Oh, I just can't use them. It's all about the grippy hand thing on the shaft. The balance is perfect for scooping. You'll be some see British bloggers in France need them for. Working to UK regulations on their electrics which are quite different. My minor act of rebellion in that respect was um, using double insulated uh, British cables, but with a French single insulated earth. One of the biggest um, tricks is that um, the earth on the three core and earth, on the British regs, the earth isn't insulated so it doesn't pass the French regs. Um, what have I done with the British uninsulated earth that's doing nothing? I'm thinking about tying it to the multi-foil insulation so that any earth build-up in the multi-foil insulation gets transferred to ground. Blocked in again. I do feel cheated. Um, it is harassment, but do I want to take my neighbour to court and log in the incidents, or do I want to have a Vichy tantrum? Neither. So my preference on the night before I go home is to sleep out in the van down the road. Oh, a pleasant enough little spot. I see the jogger go by in the morning when I wake through the steamy windows. Concrete coming did work once for a little while. But it's like the neighbours, it's like a kids wind up game to trying to get reaction. So 
don't give them a reaction. Like food cuisine tourism, um, boots tourism used to be a thing for uh, people coming to Britain. Um, bio shop tourism, by the looks of things, must surely be a big thing. Um, similar brands, but different. Um, different brands, different uh, obsessions. But three in one small town, three bio shops, fully stocked like this. <laughs> Uh, the population can't support it. Brexit gives duty-free shops a little bit more of a focus. But what do I bring back? Oh, there's the regulation. Um, perfume, bio stuff, you even allowed. Uh, a set of perfume and scented things. Um, alcohol, so much, too much choice. Three panel log burner, that's what I'd like to bring back, but um, it's the Covid thing, they're not on special offer. It was <laughs> holding me back, again. It's a long way north to think what I'm going to do when I get to Pays de Calais. When I get to the former coal mining region, do I go nuclear to get my van deposit back from the supermarket that I rented it from? Do I try and recover the engine code reset 200 euros by fair means or foul? I didn't come up with an answer. Looking at the price of a litre of wine, uh, uh, it's not a litre though, is it? It's 750 millilitres. The price of a bottle of wine, perfectly drinkable bottle of wine, can be as low as one euros fifty, but you're usually one, two euros. Same price as diesel. Now I'm not recommending you put wine into your, into your gas tank. Um, it's just, you can choose your route through France by what wine regions you go through. So I vary mine from the Burgundy region, through the Jura sometimes, through the Savoie region, and then Chambry. It sort of peters out, strictly speaking, before you get to the heights of Azaire. But then you can vary that with Burgundy region Beaujolais. Um, Val d'Aron wines and pick some up along the way. Quite often you'll go into a wine shop off licence. It's not an off licence, it's a wine shop and be able to put wine in your own container from a pump. Very similar to a petrol pump but slightly And back to the three process grind. Living the dream, living in a dream. Which is worse, uh, dental drills or the working, the making of them? I'm asking myself. Engine fuel, oh, it was an engine fuel injection. The pins, the tapered and polished pins. Were they engine fuel injection pins? Double tapered and polished pins. Ah. 
I must tell you about inadvertently covering for the uh, Czech woman, I think she was, a young young skinny Czech woman that ate nothing but sweets, and her skipping out at midnight on the night shift and um, covering that by covering, in animal breeding terms, the uh, shift supervisor. Uh, I've got to tell you about that sometime.